All right, today in the shop, we're working on a 722 Remington, and it's chambered in 244 Remington. That was a chambering part of the 6mm Remington. Um, the barrel is completely shot out. The bolt below where it rubs has like 20 thousandths of wear on it. So we're going to put a new bolt in it from PTG, and we're going to install a new Wilson barrel on it. And the contour is a number four sporter. And then I got a stock coming for it already. And we're going to do all this work on our new toy, the Haas TL1. And then I'm going to show you how I draw a tenon on the computer in Fusion. So this should be a fun build, uh, breathing life back into a new ri an old rifle and uh, basically making it new again. So... Let's get to her. Well, in true Remington fashion, it was stuck tighter than a woodpecker's bill. But we got her loose, and life is grand. So next thing we're going to do is go over to the computer and draw up a barrel tenon. Alright, so I got the old girl all broken down and if you look in here the recoil or the bolt lugs could use some love and then the receiver face is something awful. So we're going to true up the lugs get them all nice and true to the world to the bore not going to worry about the threads on this one. I, uh, my personal opinion most times, um, as long as this is square and the bolt lugs are square, I think, think that's close enough for most people. So I got a protector for my action so I don't scratch it. And I got tapered sleeves from Manson. One's going to go in the back here. And then one's going to go in the front. Wiggle in there. Okay. And then this reamer is going to be our mandrel for indicating it. We're not going to ream anything, but now we've got a matched tapered sleeve, tapered sleeve, perfectly matched to the mandrel. And we're going to run our indicator across here to get her all true with the <clears throat> bore of the bolt. We got her all dialed in. Move her back and forth. Life is grand. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this out. We're going to cut our bolt raceway lugs or our receiver lugs inside there. <clears throat> I'm going to zero out my digital readout. And then I'm going to come and face this up so it's clean out here. And then once I figure out that dimension, I'll know how uh, deep to cut the barrel tenon once we add on the recoil lug. So let's start making them cuts. All right, we're going to go in a little bit here. Okay, we're going to go in one more thou. Looking good. We're going to back her back out and then pull it out. Give the poor camera work, but three and a half thousands cleaned her all up. So now we're gonna come back and face the front of the breech, and everything the receiver lugs, the bolt lugs, and the <clears throat> breech face will all be identically the same. All right, so we got the receiver lugs all done. Now we're going to turn this on, go in, 
So we're going to skim cut the face. Once this is skim cut, I'm going to write down my measurement on my digital readout. So we're touching with two thousands, three, four, five thousands. See if five thousands will clean it up. So five thousands didn't clean it up, so we'll take off two more. One, two. All right, I think that cleaned her up. Perfect. So now the raceway lugs, the boat lugs, and the barrel will all be 100% in line with each other. So since I got my haws, <clears throat> I kind of switched up my oil flush system. I used to use this thing pressed against here. And that sealed great here, but once we got pressure built up, some of them would leak right there. So I got tired of dealing with that, so I come up with this. It's 8th inch pipe thread. I got some 16th inch pipe thread fittings on the way, so I don't have to drill such a big hole. But this just screws in here beautifully. Well, at least it's supposed to be beautifully. And then once we tighten it up, she definitely will not leak. And then I couple it to my oil rotary union with the quick coupling. I'll show that on the lathe. So yeah, that's all we do there. So let's go put it in the lathe. So I got the barrel in the lathe. This is the hose we just screwed on. It quick disconnects to the Dublin union, like so. <coughs> Just like that. So this will rotate. This is adjustable in and out. And then my oil pressure system quick disconnects on the bottom. So now this can spin and we'll have our oil flowing through there. And it's been basically leak proof on everything I've done so far. So pretty happy with the system. So I'm going to try pre-boring this one. And the reason I'm doing it is some people say you can get a little run out if you got a barrel that's pretty, pretty far off center over here. I haven't experienced much of that yet, but I want to see if I get zero run out on this one. So we're only going to worry about indicating this area here and forward. So... Here's our go no go gauge. So you can see where that all lines up there. We'll be going forward. So we'll go back to here and forward. And that'll ensure that the bore of the lathe and the bore of the barrel are concentric, clear up here by the lands where it's being cut and forward. Back here, we're going to make it concentric. We're going to drill it out with the drill and then bore it so everything's perfectly concentric by the spindle spinning. But this will indicate going forward. So up there, no matter what, it should be perfectly true with the bore. All right, this one fought me a little bit, but we got her dialed in back in front of the... <coughs> the lands and right on the lands okay so now the reamer when it goes in there this part will be perfectly centered in the bore and then i'm going to come back here and drill this out with the drill bit and bore it out with the boring bar so this back area will be perfectly concentric to the bore so no matter what, wherever this reamer engages, 
Everything will cut perfectly, concentricity to the bore. Now it's gonna move over and shut the camera. All right, the drilling cycle's done. We're gonna swap over to the boring bar. This cut's gonna come in, it's gonna drill out our bolt nose recess, and it's gonna skim cut the chamber. All right, I position the camera. out there. So now you can see we've got our bolt nose recess done. <clears throat> we got our chamfer for our chamber and we got a hole perfectly concentric to the bore for our reamer to follow. And off camera I got our tool offset set to this diameter. We're going to fire it up. It's going to come in and cut the tenon and then we're going to check to make sure the recoil lug fits and then we'll thread it. So now we'll measure this bad boy. Little tight. I'm going to adjust that tool offset and run it one more time. All right, it's taking the finish pass now. Just a little polish and to get it on there. Oh, it went that way. All right, the recoil lug's on. Fits nice and tight. No real play whatsoever. The next thing we're going to do is start our threading cycle. Put the recoil lug on. Make sure the bolt cycles up and down, and we'll double check our measurements. Okay, bolt's free. All right, I got everything lined up to the bore. When the shoulder gets to here, that's my top. I'm gonna go in 460 thousandths, and it'll run its cycle, come back, and we should have about 25 to 30 more thousandths to take off for headspace. Uh, coming in, and once you get a hundred thousandths away, it should slow down. What you did. Uh, we got full oil flow going. And now it's starting its cutting cycle. It's going to take forever to do. I'll move you here. It's going to go in and it's going to stop. Plunges and it stops, backs out and plunges again. And goes in, I want to say, 25 thousandths at a time. All right, we're coming up to the end here. All right, that's that. All right, we're going to check our headspace. Recoil lug still goes around and around. Try ten thousandths. 
ten thousandths is too tight. Let's try nine thousandths. Nine thousandths is fits. Eight should go perfectly easy. Here's eight. So eight is what fits fine. So you got eight thousandths clearance. So we got to take off eight plus a thousandths for crush and another thou and a quarter for uh, free play. So let's make that cut. All right, I got the no-go gauge in, hard stop, I'm going to make a mess. Okay, there goes our no-go gauge. We'll throw in our go gauge. Go gauge goes in and closes. No drag. So life is good. We got our head spaced. So now that we got the chamber all cut, you can see we're bouncing on zero. Life is good there. We're going to back it out a little. We go in. This is the lead. So all the lead is bouncing the same. Let's go up into the bore. That's bouncing the same. Come out a little bit. The lead is going to go away. Okay. All the lead's gone there with no run out. Now we drop down to where the neck will be. No run out. Now we drop down to oh, do this here just so you can see it. Now we're into the body of the cartridge. Towards the back of the case. All the way to the end of the case. You can see my indicator there zero run out and then it's going to drop again so yeah an absolutely perfect chamber with zero run out all right here's the visual chamber inspection so these are where all the lands are you can see they all start exactly the same place we'll go back here just like we measured, all the lead starts at the exact same place. Keep going. The neck, the throat, or sorry, the neck into the case taper and all the way out. So, yeah, turned out wonderful.